right, guys, thanks again so much for stopping by. I have the trailer hooked up to the Duramax, and today I'm gonna do something a little different. So as you guys can see, I have train horns, specifically from Horn Blasters. I actually have legit train horns connected to this truck. Why do I have train horns? This is America, I don't, I don't know, they're just really cool. Um, but more in particular, I wanna make this semi-practical now. Now with the kit, I believe it's about a two and a half gallon tank. And what I'd like to do is use that tank to plummet to some airbags for this truck. Now, instead of me going out and spending a ridiculous amount of money on airbags, the systems with the app and all that, and I looked it up, it was crazy. What I'm planning on doing today is sort of engineering my own system back there using the existing air tank. So I'm gonna be going to the hardware store. I'm gonna be, I'm actually, I bought a kit. I bought some airbags for it as well. A company called Airmax. I'm not gonna recommend them because I've honestly never used them before. The kit is specifically for a 2500 HD, um, but they're just the bags. So, you know, I'm gonna need spacers and on top of that fittings and stuff like that in order to hook up to the tank. I have no idea if this is even gonna turn out or even if this is really gonna work for me, work out. I, I'm pretty sure it'll actually work, but let's see once we actually put some weight on it. This thing says a gross vehicle weight of 7,300 pounds. It was actually pretty challenging when I was hauling Life Max with All Red from Wisconsin back to Michigan using this trailer right here and I was squatting like you wouldn't believe. So I'm gonna do that today, guys. Also, um, weight distribution hitch. 100% absolutely, I'm doing that to that trailer. What I'd like for you guys to do in the comments is leave me suggestions down in the comments below of distribution hitch companies. What are the best on the market? I have my ideas already. So let me show you guys how badly this squats. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Tahoe, just drive it right up on the back of that trailer. Put some good tongue weight on that on that actual hitch. The specific hitch that I'm using is a Gen Y 16K torsion hitch. And it's actually, it's pretty cool. It actually flexes and everything when you drive in it. Really isolates the bumpiness from the trailer to the vehicle itself. Pretty happy with this hitch right here. But um, again, if I'm gonna be doing a distribution hitch, I'm probably not gonna use that setup right there. But I will be using that for this trailer. I spent a total of about $300 on this little kit right here. So $300 versus $1,500, you know what I mean? So let's see what happens. Check this out, man, check this out the Tahoe up as far as I possibly could go to exaggerate the squat a little bit more so I did put more tongue weight on it as you guys can see it's dipping pretty good all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and take the Tahoe off the trailer I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this once I actually install the airbag I'll go ahead and pull this vehicle back up on the trailer we'll go ahead and turn the airbags on once they're installed and see how high this thing picks up so let's go ahead and do this let's get this truck in the garage I'm excited okay, so here we go now this right here is an Air Max product so when I purchased this kit, this is compatible with a 2500 HD. And it's kind of sort of a hodgepodge of other little things that I picked up. For example, this is going to be a shutoff valve. I'll be plumbing this to my train horn air tank. So this is going to be a very interesting video for you guys if you want to watch till the end. Today, guys, we're going to go ahead and install this entire kit right here. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do it. You guys let me know in the comments what you think at the end. Should I have done something differently? But in my case, since I'm using the air tank, I don't need the compressor, I don't need any of that stuff. So I wanna go directly to that air tank and hopefully this will all work out correctly. Now we'll be using quarter inch line. Also what I went ahead and did is remove the air drain valve on the tank itself and I matched it up at the hardware store and it came with the compression fitting right here, which will connect right directly to this plastic air line. However, this is a push lock fitting. I know it's plastic, okay? So this will be in my toolbox just in case. Even if the airbags go out, I still have the leaf spring, so it doesn't really matter. But what I'll be doing today is I'm gonna install this plastic fitting. This is rated up to 150 PSI, and it's a push lock. So it just simply pushes right in, and you're good to go. So with that being said, I'm gonna plumb it to this air shutoff valve right here. So when not in use, the air tank will be inflated, and once I want to inflate the airbags, all I got to do is turn this little valve right here and it'll air these up from underneath the truck. We're going to go ahead and install this right now. Let's get to work. Everything's put together. All I need to do is really just install it. Here's the problem though. I don't feel comfortable with the setup right now because of this right here. Whether or not we can doubt the engineers who fabricated all this stuff to make this happen correctly, I can't trust it. It's only going to be held on by one little bolt. And I understand once it's installed, you're going to have the weight pressing down on these spacers. And this is going to be bolted to the rear end. So I know it's not going to go anywhere. But in the event that that one bolt somehow works its way loose, even though we put Loctite on it, I don't trust it one bit. So what I'm going to do, 
gonna go ahead and grind everything down on the bottom here not everything but you know certain spots and i'm gonna go ahead and just start welding uh, i want to make sure this thing is good i want a solid platform especially if i'm hauling a trailer not only that i've been using this as my tow pig driving it across country lately pulling trailers that has to be safe probably run a few beads on the on the four corners just to ensure that this is good too but i don't want to get too crazy because we have all this rubber right here so let's go ahead and get to work So the paint is dry, we're gonna go ahead and install these bags right now. And then what I'll do guys is I'm gonna go ahead and just plumb everything together. I'm not gonna show you exactly how I do that. I'll show you guys the end result though. And then we'll go ahead and hook this thing up to a trailer. Okay guys, so we have the air compressor going right now. It's filling up that air tank. And once that air tank is filled up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the valve and see how this thing works. This setup really is a lot for my imagination, going to the hardware store, picking up parts, and just trying to piece things together to make this work with the air tank with the train horns. So check it out guys, 13 inches. And this is at stock right height without the bags on. And then we'll go ahead and turn the valve and let's go ahead and see how high this kicks up. <laughs> it works. That's awesome. That went up exceptionally high. I wasn't expecting it to go up that high. So let's go ahead and measure the back end and see how high that actually was picked up. And ladies and gentlemen, we're at 15 inches. We just picked up the back end, two inches high. So it looks a little silly too, because the front end's lower. I actually cranked the torsion keys down in the front because I wasn't able to get in my garage. And I guarantee you, especially for some of you guys that's been following me for a while now, you know this garage door isn't very tall. So if I was to try to back this truck out right now, I'd probably hit something. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and lower it back down. So, all right, I'm excited about it. Let's go ahead and take this thing outside. All right, so check it out. Here's my setup so you guys can see. We have the airbags installed. And what I did is I plumbed the line across the axle right here. And this is where it actually hooks up to the T. And this right here is where I installed my valve. And then it shoots right up here to the tank. And right next to it is the open valve in order to dump the bags. In order for me to inflate these bags, I'm going to go ahead and turn this right here. And that's it. And then once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And what that allows it to do is isolate the actual bags from the train horns. And when I want to go ahead and dump, I open the valve. And then of course, once I drain my bags, I wanna go ahead and shut that valve off again because if I turn the key, it's gonna air the bags up in the back and I won't even know it. So this always has to be shut off. What I like about this setup versus the fancy stuff is that it's mechanical. So I wanna keep this thing stupid simple and if we ever have any issues down the road, it's very easy to fix. So I'm really glad that I did this. Okay, so now that we have the airbags hooked up to the truck, we're gonna go ahead and attempt to pull this Tahoe back up on the trailer. But I'll go ahead and take this tape measure and I'll measure the top of the tire to the top of the wheel well again pretty much even with a foot 12 inches we went from 12 inches to about 10 and a half inches or so yeah, but I'd say about 10 and a half inches. So not too bad on the squat. So it's grand finale time, guys. Let's go ahead and get this thing jacked up and see what happens. Man, I'm happy right now. This is awesome. I'm really happy that I have these airbags on now. I used to have them on the truck before, but they were old and destroyed. And it's really good to have a setup again. So let's see what my handiwork actually did here. So we went from 11 and a half inches to 12 and I'd say three quarters. So almost up there at 13 inches. The airbags definitely do the trick. Look at that, no squat, zero squat whatsoever. As a matter of fact, the back end's even raised up another extra half inch. Mm -hmm. 
So now that we have the Duramax back in the garage, the real question is, will the train horn still work? tell you what that thing shakes the ground when I push that button it is insane so the good thing about my setup here is the valve that I have underneath there when I turn it of course it's gonna go up if I don't want it to go up that high I can slowly turn it and then get it to where I want it and then shut it off you see where I'm getting at and not only that it works in conjunction with the train horns but yes I'm very happy with the setup I know I didn't take it out on the road today but I'm gonna be pulling the camper in another video I'm gonna be having the airbags completely inflated, so I'm gonna put some miles on that just to make sure everything is good. I need your help. Tell me what's a good distribution hitch company to go with. And again, I've looked at a whole bunch of them and I gotta pick one out. They're not cheap one bit. Also, we have a week and a half left and then I'm closing the contest completely. December 9th will be the exact date. We're giving away a fully restored GMC Duramax on the channel. We're really excited about it. We built it on the channel. If you guys missed out on all those episodes, uh, Ryan's Diesel Service and Kodiak Truck. We all did that there at their shop in Wisconsin and we are all very excited to give this thing away. Also, let me know in the comments what you guys think about my homemade setup versus some of the big stuff out there, the big companies, what I should have went with. But then again, I'm glad I went with this instead. Let's be honest, guys. I'm pretty happy with this setup. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Stay tuned.